Hey guys, you're watching Python tutorial videos on my YouTube channel Python for Microscopists. In this video, I'm going to talk about HND stained images for histology and how you can normalize them and of course how you can separate the H and the E components out of these images. For those of you pathologists, you probably know what I'm talking about. For others, just to give you a quick uh, intro or a quick background, H in HND stands for hematoxylin and E stands for eosin. And this is the preferred way by pathologists to stain their images. So let me jump out of this screen so I can show you. I just quickly did a Google search for HND stain and you can see some of the images here. And this is used uh, in pathology, uh, of course, in histology in general. So uh, why do they prefer these uh, dyes? Well, as you can clearly see, you see these blue dots and you see the pinkish background, right? In most of the images. And the blue dots are all nuclei and they're blue because the H hematoxylin stains these nuclei blue. Okay, let's not get into why it stains it blue. If there are enough information online for you to uh, you know, understand that aspect. And of course, the every uh, outside of nucleus including cytoplasm is uh, stained in pink which is from the eosin E okay and uh, it's not just the cytoplasm in fact intracellular uh, you know and also some of these intracellular regions outside of these cell regions are also stained in pink okay so immediately you can kind of see these nuclei and then start uh, understanding the problem now if it's a manual process, no problem, right? I mean, uh, you can look at this and you can say, okay, how rounded my nucleus are, uh, nuclei are and how dense they are and what is the size and shape of these, which tells the pathologist uh, exactly, you know, how to interpret, you know, a given tissue. Now, if you look at some of these images, like on the left and right, this is too pink and this is like a less pink. And you see some of these images, I mean, these appear to be red blood cells, but if you look at some of these other regions, the, the pink to blue regions, uh, it's, they're, they're all not uh, in the same color space, color scale, I should say, not color space, color scale, which means uh, for automated image processing, you'll run into issues if you don't account for these changes, these differences. Well, for deep machine learning, you can throw thousands and thousands of images at the machine learning algorithm, and it can probably try to understand this. But for regular analysis, it's a very important thing to color normalize these images. Now, I'm not a uh, biologist. I'm not trying to reinvent what others have done, and I don't have skills to do that. So my goal with this tutorial is to show you one important paper and also show you uh, uh, an example code that has been written uh, in accordance with this paper but written in MATLAB. So I'm going to show you the Python code that I kind of modified a little bit and then I'll also share that on my on my uh, GitHub page. This is an excellent paper. So they actually talk about how you can normalize this histology, histology slide so you can do automated analysis for quantitative analysis, for example, okay? And it comes down to uh, a few key steps. Let me just show you a couple of steps here, okay? Let me scroll down. You can read the paper on your own. I'll leave the link to this. I'll also leave the link to the MATLAB code okay uh which i completely adapted to uh into python so i literally copied this so i'll have to leave this reference okay and also a couple other references here stain deconvolution using statistical analysis you'll find a whole bunch of papers on this uh, on this topic okay so what i'm going to show you is uh, a appears to be a relatively uh, straightforward or accepted well accepted uh topic so going back to this uh, here, so you input an RGB image, okay? And then you convert the RGB to the OD space, which is the optical density space. Uh, very similar, again, don't be intimidated by all of that terminology. Optical density space is nothing but you take your input image and do negative logarithmic uh, operation onto it with a base of 10, okay? And then uh, the assumption is, okay, your uh, optical density image is equals to, uh, uh, you know, these two contributions, and then you're trying to uh, get these contributions out of this. So now how do you do that? Again, you can read the paper, but uh, they're actually step number two is to remove all the data with optical density intensity less than certain predefined amount. They called it beta. 
Okay, and this is why, why are they doing that? This is nothing but transparent pixels. In an image, if you have transparent pixels, there is not much going on there, okay? Just remove that and only include the blue and the pink regions. That's what that is, okay? And then they're going to do SVD on the OD tuples, and I copied those steps here. Uh, and again, SVD stands for Singular Value Decomposition. If you want more information, I also, uh, you know, uh, Google search for that and here is the Wiki Wikipedia page. But to make this simple, this is basically extracting the eigenvalues, okay? Out of, uh, you probably learned of eigenvalues and eigenvectors as part of your uh, maybe high school math. So that's what we are trying to do and create a plane from this corresponding to the l two largest single values of this SVD directions and projecting our data onto that plane and again they actually did a great job in explaining what that means you know they actually showed you the raw pixel plotting and then how you can actually project it onto these od spaces and how it kind of helps us to uh, extract these two uh, uh, strong signals which again eventually corresponds to our h and e uh, channels or h and e uh, uh, yeah uh, uh, stains, for example, and then uh, find these robust extremes and convert this back to OD space. I mean, I kind of am trivializing when I'm saying this because I read this paper and tried to understand, and I think I understand most of it. But uh, again, go ahead and read this. This is a great paper. Also, look at this uh, MATLAB code. Now, switching to my Python code here, again, I'm going to uh, share this. I'll include the link to this MATLAB. I'll also include this other uh, useful resources link. But let's scroll down so I can at least explain at a high level what's going on here. So of course we are inputting an RGB image. I always prefer to use OpenCV. So I, 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 I just imported this image using OpenCV, okay? And uh, I downloaded an image from, a Go from Google search. So I'm giving the reference right there. And the image that we'll be working on looks somewhat like this. It looks pretty, so that's why I, uh, I chose this and it actually works on any image in almost any format. It can be PNG, JPEG or anything. As long as you can read, it should work. Now I'm converting my image from BGR to RGB because again, you probably know this, uh, this is part of OpenCV, how it reads images as BGR. But in this example, colors are very important for us. So I wanna convert them back to RGB. So everything else works. That's all I did here, okay? Everything else is a literal adaptation from this MATLAB code that you can see here. So they defined, for example, starting with an IO, which is the normalizing factor for intensity of 240 okay and then beta equals to 0 0.15 and alpha is one so this is exactly what i've done beta again what is beta it's it's uh, the optical density threshold that we just talked about okay and uh, now uh, you i just want to make sure i was playing around with beta and alpha values i just want to make sure i got my alpha okay alpha was one and then they also defined this uh, 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 HE ref, which is uh, the reference H and E uh, optical density matrix. Now, where do you get that? Well, if you know, there are at least four or five different papers that got published with these numbers, and these numbers are coming directly from the paper I was talking about, okay? You can actually pick others, and if you actually know a bit more about the way, uh, you know, you have performed your experiment and you ma measured the transmission, intensities and all that, I believe you can actually get these numbers out of it, okay? Same with your reference maximum stain concentrations. And uh, then we are basically getting the height, width, and uh, number of channels here, and we are reshaping it to such a way that we are collapsing all the uh, uh, pixels into one column, and then for each of these channels. Now, you can go ahead and plot it. I was actually testing the plotting here. It takes a bit of a time on my system because it's a 3D plot and tremendous amount of data, but go ahead and do that if you want. So this image is in the regular image space, and this is in the optical, density space. Now again, going back to this, what I was trying to do was basically recreate this image. Okay, so if I go back, so this image where they have done 3D plotting. Okay, so, uh, uh, but I, I'm not going to plot it for now. And uh, this is, uh, how do we get our optical density? Remember this negative log to the base 10 of our image. And now I converted the image into floating point. Uh, just like uh, in the MATLAB code that they have done. And I added one to
to uh, every pixel value because if there is a pixel where uh, you have your value to be zero, completely dark, then log of zero is indeter indeterminate, right? So I don't want to run into that, so I actually added one to every number there. That's all this part of this code is. And then moving on, okay, now you are removing the data with optical intensity less than certain value, in this case less than beta, right? Uh, and that's exactly what that step is. And then the next step is calculating the eigenvalues and eigenvectors, which is this SVD part that they were talking about. Okay, and uh, under NumPy, you have a library that can act, uh, linear and uh, algebra library, and in there you have eigenvalues uh, that you can actually extract. And then uh, again, following these steps, uh, some of these can get a bit complicated, but go ahead and study each of this, go ahead and print out the values for each of this to see exactly what's going on. But if your goal is to use this to normalize your images, of course, the code should be ready to do that. Okay, so eventually what we care about is once everything is converted back to its right space, I norm is the normalized image. H is the H uh, channel and E is the uh, E channel or E signal that we are separating. So I'm going to use uh, a matplotlib spyplot to save these images into the right folders. That's it. So let's go ahead and run this code and look at the output images in uh, the appropriate folder. This should be pretty quick. The code execution should be pretty quick and uh, go ahead and look at the variable explorer to go ahead and study like every little step here to understand what's going on. Okay, so now let's go ahead and open these images. So here is my input image that we just saw. I'm using Windows Viewer and it's slow and I hate it, but this is probably the easiest way to show these images. So here is the input image and here is, sorry, wrong one. Yeah, it should have showed. Let me open this one more time. So here is the normalized image and here is the input image. As you can see, two pink and somewhat uh, blue. And uh, now you can actually see the normalized image. And this works no matter what type of input image. In fact, I tested this on a few images and play with these alpha and beta values to actually see how it works on your images. Okay, so once you have this and then the next one is extracting the, uh, in this case, this is E, right? Eocene, which shows you this uh, cytoplasm and uh, other areas of the tissue. And of course, the blue shows you the nuclear uh, regions. So the next step uh, uh, following this uh, logically would be writing code for, for example, uh, nuclei segmentation, and then maybe you need watershed to se uh, separate these and then count the size and shape of these nuclei. And I covered this uh, at least a couple of times uh, uh, as part of my tutorial series here. And uh, one of the videos was about uh, cell segmentation and using watershed to separate, and maybe that works for this one. I'll let you try that out. But I just wanna make sure because I was going through a bunch of papers and I found this, then this turned out to be very interesting. I'm recording this video, hoping that uh, some of you can benefit from this. Okay, so uh, all credit goes to whoever did the actual work. I'm just creating a video, so I'll give all the references as part of my video. And I hope you found this to be very useful. Thank you very much.